Dan Oman here with the DRF Race of the Day for Sunday, January the 28th. It's race number seven at Santa Anita. The Clockers Corner Stakes. We're going down the hill at about six and a half furlongs. Hundred grander. It's a restricted stakes event. Let's take a peek at this field. Number five, Hamwood Flyer is a mare taking on the boys, but she sure fits with this sort of competition. Dropping out of a couple of graded stakes races and also dropping back in distance with good early speed. You could make the argument that Hamwood Flyer is the horse to beat and she's going to be part of the pace as we take a look at our time form U.S. pace projector. Hamwood Flyer, despite cutting back in distance, is quick. So is the horse down on the inside, Mucho Del Oro, who might opt for a pace tracking ground saving trip. And also the horse on the far outside, Sumter, removing blinkers, a first time gelding off a short layoff. This horse has shown speed, is also cutting back in distance. Uh, Hamwood Flyer should be in with a big chance turning into the stretch, as should the one, Mucho Del Oro. We have not seen this horse since early June when he scored this race going six and a half on the straightaway course and doing it in track record time. Now this horse was taking advantage of a double drop in class into a starter optional claimer, went right to the front and was simply too fast for these foes. Claimed that day by Doug O'Neill, he has been on the shelf for a long time, but this horse did show some quality back in 2022, winning three consecutive races, including a little stakes race at Turf Paradise. This horse does have some tactical speed, earned a big buyer speed figure in that most recent start, is going to have to deal with a layoff and tougher competition, but a good trip is coming. He seems like a versatile sort. The two is Johnny Padres, one of several in here dropping out of the grade two Joe Hernandez. Now that was a race that was run in one-two fashion. The horses on the lead just seemed to dominate throughout. The pace was slow and closers like Johnny Padres were likely compromised. Now Johnny Padres was 54 to one in that race. He might simply have been overmatched to boot. But when you go back to his race three starts back, the California flag, the last time he was in against state bred or restricted competition going down the hill, he finished a very good second at 20 to one. There's a chance that this pace heats up. It should certainly be hotter than it was in the Hernandez and perhaps Johnny Padres can take advantage at a big price to at least get into your exotics uh, on the bottom at the very least. Standing O is the number three. This horse looked pretty good last time out, winning a second level allowance at Del Mar. First start over about a three month layoff. The pace wasn't very fast, but Standing O, despite being down inside and in a little bit tight, is able to get on through and win and beat three next out winners. The fifth place horse came back to grab a second level allowance with a 91 buyer. So Standing O beat a pretty good field that day. Remember that race was at five furlongs. He has run okay at six and a half in the past going down the hill and there's another one with the tactical ability to work out a decent trip. Daniel's Magic is the number four. He finished fourth in the Hernandez. It was a race again where he was kind of forced to stay close to that tepid pace. I wonder if Daniel's Magic is more effective when he's taken back and allowed to make one run as we saw in his wins going down the hill three and four starts back. I think going down the hill is really what he wants to do and the Hernandez was run over the straightaway six and a half furlongs. So he's getting back down the hill. He's getting a little bit more pace. I think he'll revert to those rating tactics under Flavian Pratt. Somewhat interesting getting a different pace dynamic, one that should favor his style. Hamwood Flyer is the number five, and this horse was just in a little bit too tough last time out in the Matriarch, a grade one race going a mile. Ruby Nell was in that race. She came back to win with a 97 buyer speed figure in a stakes race and is down at Gulfstream Park on Saturday for one of the big Pegasus World Cup races. Hamwood Flyer is going to sprint for the first and time since the only other sprint in her career way back in 2021 in Ireland when she raced seven furlongs and she won that day. I think the six and a half is going to hit her right between the eyes. I generally like cutbacks and distance. She should be up close to the pace and this class relief figures to hit her right in between the eyes. Iridao is the number six. She was fifth. He was fifth last time out in a two turn mile race. It was an allowance and the horse that finished right in front of him came back to win a second level race with a 94 buyer speed figure. This is a horse who needs a lot of pace help. He is a true one run closer. Cutting back to six and a half might be a bit sharp for him. So he's going to need a really fast pace to set things up. He'll be racing on from the back of the pack. I'm a gambler as a horse that I thought was truly compromised as the favorite in the Hernandez. And as a horse, you might want to take a chance on at a much better price this time around. A, the Hernandez was his first race off the layoff. B, we mentioned the
there just wasn't any pace, and this horse was trying to rally from the back of the pack and just couldn't get it done. The race held together. He has run some races in the past that make him very strong, including that 93 buyer performance in the Eddie D3 starts back, and he's a horse that doesn't need to be so far off of the pace. I think he's more adaptable, and I think with that last race under his belt, he's another interesting horse that could perhaps close and benefit if the pace is fast. Sumter's likely to be part of the pace, even taking the blinkers off for trainer Richard Mandela. He's also racing as a first-time gelding. They tried the grade 2 Seabiscuit last time out. It was too far going a mile and a sixteenth, and the competition was likely too tough. He went to the lead that day. He got tired. He was running against one of Southern California's best middle distance turf horses. Easter came back to win a grade 2, the San Gabriel, with a 96 buyer speed figure. Cutting back in distance should work for Sumter. I like this nice outside post position. He figures to be in the thick of things when they turn into the stretch. Before we get to my top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel for the latest DRF videos. Top pick time for Sunday's race of the day. I think you can go so many different ways and I think you probably need to make your own value line and then go for the overlay. I'm hoping Mucho Del Oro maybe is sort of lost in the shuffle based on the fact that we haven't seen this horse since June and is going to be stepping up in class. But he's run some fast races in the past and I think a trip could work out tracking inside. So I'll take a chance with Mucho Del Oro in Sunday's DRF race of the day, the Clockers Corner at Santa Anita. Good luck.